Sinead McKenna is a renowned fiddle player, singer and multi-instrumentalist from Ocker County, Tyrone. Her clean creative playing stems from many traditional influences, including her large musical family who are deeply rooted in trad music and culture. Sinead has won numerous awards at All-Ireland level and performed across Europe, the Middle East and with her family in New York City as part of the 2023 St. Patrick's Day celebrations. As well as being a leading member of the Dunkerns Trad Collective, Sinead has also received a Gradam Kuehl bursary from Belfast City Council in recognition of her talent and potential as an exciting young traditional musician. This house, um, everyone was learning an instrument, and it didn't matter if you wanted to or not. You're born with a tin whistle in your hand, and um, my earliest memory would be probably sitting in the car listening to CDs, going to Flas, and travelling down to different Irish music festivals during the summer, um, visiting our grand uncle in County Monaghan in a wee place called Carry Crow where he lived. He was a great fiddle player. So we used to, um, as we say, Kaylee with him 
uh, usually on a Saturday night, and he would be sitting in the house with his fiddle on the table or on the sofa, and he would always ask you to play your tunes. What did you learn this week? And I suppose that was probably some of the first early childhood memories in listening and playing music. I think, um, as far as I know, picking up the fiddle um, was probably messing about in the house when um, my old, whenever Eugene was learning the fiddle. I suppose there was always instruments in the house even before we played music. So we always were able to walk around the um, house and pick up fiddles or banjos and even if we didn't know how to play them, we'd, we'd try and make an effort. So I suppose that kind of gave us the first interest in music. So Mummy um, would be a wee bit musical. She um, played music when she was younger, but Dad um, would be the most musical. He learned the banjo when he was younger, and um, I suppose that's kind of where the interest in the house stemmed for, was Dad's side of the house and his family history of his grand uncles that played music, two great fiddle players, Pete McKenna and Pat McKenna. So we have Eugene on the fiddle. Eugene is the oldest and he's probably the most organised. Um, so he keeps us all going, keeps us all right. Then we have Daniel who plays the Botany Guardian. Daniel um, would be very creative in kind of all types of music. Then we have James who plays concertina. Then we have um, Peter who plays the Ellen Pipes. And Katrina, who plays the fiddle, the piano, and the flute. Then we have Kieran, who plays the harp, the fiddle, and the piano. Me and Katrina and Kieran would all sing a bit. And everybody grew up with a tin whistle in their hand, so I suppose we can always turn our hand to it if we have to at some stage. But uh, yeah, it's good crack now when there's a family event on, there's instruments laying everywhere, and there's all sorts of noises coming out of the kitchen. <laughs> It's a very um, small village. Um, we wouldn't have had many musical opportunities in the village, but our local protest branch have made a great effort to implement the opportunities for young, young people in the area. So those memories date back to the 2000s when our Kiltus branch started a music festival in Ahar. and. We were always travelling outside of Tyrone or Ahar to go and play music with other people, but this was the first time in Ahar that we had an Irish music festival. It, it was amazing because it brought music to Ahar and as, as a child I thought this was amazing because I got to see all the people that I'd been listening to on YouTube. There was the likes of Derek Hickey, um, Laura Bergen, Donald McCaig, Michael McCaig, 
and that's what brought music to Ahr for us. Well, we have a, we have two pubs. We are flying. We have McKenna's Bar and we have Johnson's Bar. And um, usually now, wouldn't usually play in Ahr um, unless we used to have our festivals. And hopefully, at some stage, they can make a comeback. Um, but we would have been playing in Johnson's or McKenna's pub for those um, session trails. Uh, and we do have like local classes that used to take place in a place called the Cranog. So I teach at the local classes in Wadden in uh, Bali Bali. Um Well, we were always given the opportunity, opportunity to take part in the FLA. Although we knew that at the time, as children, that that wasn't the most important thing about music. We always took part in it to see how we get on. And some years there would be broken fingers, and some years there would be football taking place. So it was a battle between what we're going to pick football or the FLA. My most recent achievement would have been coming second in All Ireland last year, 2022, and the year before COVID, which was 2019. I would have been doing solo competitions on the flute or the fiddle or singing, or else. We would have done duet and trial competitions, which would have been like playing with one of the boys in the family. So I was very lucky to have a selection of um, people to pick from in the house to play with. And uh, I, can't, I can't say we always get on, but um, we always made a good effort to give it a go. And sure, at the end of the day, we weren't too annoyed if nothing came out of it. I was very lucky to have won the um, Ed Revy fiddle competition, which is held in Calvin. Ed Revy is a renowned fiddle player composer. And he wrote um, all these wonderful tunes that I play to this day. I was so lucky to get the Glad of a Cool Bursary with the Duncan Arts Centre in 2022, which gave me the opportunity to put the bursary towards my own use. So I decided to record some music with it. Although I knew in my head it was going to be a big um, process, I didn't really understand fully how big it was going to be until I started sitting down to organise the music for it. And I realised, gosh, this isn't just playing a few tunes like this is really putting music together and it's a lot of decision making but I really enjoyed it and um, I'm really excited for uh, the end result to see what comes out of it. But in my album I have decided to incorporate music from early influences that I've had in my life and write my own tunes for the album as well so that has been an enjoyable process. It has allowed me to think outside the box and try to use my early influences to 
um, compose my own music. All these different styles have had an impact on my own style as a um, young musician now. When I play music, I have my own distinct style. One of the pieces I wrote was called The Good Room and it was named after um, the room in the house where we spent and probably the most time arguing over a room to play music in. So, um, And another tune I wrote is called Waiting on the Mare because one day I was in the Duncan Arts Centre and I was practising in the Shamrock Glass, the green room, and um, the mayor of Belfast was in the room next door, which is kind of an open concert style room. And um, I was told that she was going to be there for about an hour, and she ended up being there for a bit longer. And I wasn't allowed to play music, so I decided to write a tune instead. So that tune is going on the album as well. And I've decided to get one of my brothers and Peter in the pipes for that set. and bringing in a guitar player and pianist, Rachel Masterson, all the way from Longford. Um, I grew up as a teenager playing with Rachel and I think it's very special to have her on the album. It kind of highlights the journey growing up in the traditional music scene. As well as that, I have Mickey Ferrin um, on the guitar. I chose to work with Sean O'Graham, who is a brilliant producer. I've been working very closely with him over the last few months in creating the music to the to represents my own style and represents my interpretation of the tunes. We have one more day to finish up and play the album will be ready to release before the summer. to hear tunes from a few different composers that I would have learnt their tunes growing up. So there's the likes of Tommy Peoples, who's a great um, fiddle player from Donegal. There is the likes of Sean McGuire, who's a great Fermanagh fiddle player. I learnt a lot of these tunes from uh, Breach Harper, who is a great fiddle player from Donegal. We are very lucky that she's living in Tyrone at the minute. When I was younger, I was afforded the opportunity to go to lessons with her and I suppose going to Bridge gave me the opportunity to learn not just um, tunes from Ireland, but tunes from Cape Breton or Scotland, and it opened up a wider repertoire of music for me as a young, um, young musician. In March 2023, me and the family went out to New York for a week for St. Patrick's. We were given the opportunity to play for the United Nations and the Irish Ambassador of the United Nations. We played at the New York Irish Centre and the Ashton Irish Centre. Um, it was brilliant for us to go out because it pushed us out of our comfort zone as a family to um, organise new music and to bring it out to showcase in the States. And it, it did mean a lot of practising. Um, seven children playing music, I think the hardest part was getting everybody in the same room at the same time. When we landed in New York City, um, we had our instruments above the feet, so we were naturally taking them down and um, hoping to get off the plane, the same as. And um, because there was a bit of a backlog, people were stopping us to see if we would play a few tunes before they got off. So we just thought it was a bit of fun and a bit of light-hearted crack. So um, we took the instruments out, and next day, next day before we knew it, um, it was all over the internet. So sure, we wouldn't be t we wouldn't be fond of going viral now, but sure, it was, it was good to see that people could have their own opinions. <laughs> we actually got asked back to um, New York in October to receive an awards for the Echo Irish Awards. Yeah, so I do, I've only started recently um, reading into um, Irish myths and legends, but um, I was researching my local area a few months ago when I was working on the music for the album, and um, there's a local forest beside me called Knockmany Forest. And um, although we walked it every day during the lockdown, and it's one of my favourite places in Ahur, um, we kind of forget that these places have history. We didn't get the opportunity to learn Irish in primary school, but when we got the opportunity in secondary school, we 
really appreciated how much it would benefit us as young um, artists and as young people growing up in a modern society. So uh, we think that I, I definitely like really think that my Irish has contributed to my um, musical experiences. Um, recently we played at the Radio Nigel Tukta 50th celebrations in the Arkland in Guidoor. And um, it was a great night of celebrating Irish culture and music. Opportunities like that we have got from speaking Irish and being able to play music as well. And I suppose I have great um, appreciation for the culture and diversity in Belfast City and the opportunities as a whole that young people are getting because of their interest in music and Irish and especially the Duncarn Arts Centre. Try me go connect no see you go in the yard. 